Well, gosh, it's been a very wet week. Uh, it's been the wettest, I think, ever. Some people say it's La Nina, global warming. No, it's clear to me that someone in Seattle has angered God. <laughs> you know who you are. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Please, stop it. A lot of anger in town. A lot of people very angry about the weather. And now, this week, we found out that there's a lot of folks angry about the proposed light rail route. Did you see this? <laughs> Oh, God, anger everywhere. They say the train will go from SeaTac to Shoreline. That's the basic thing. And all sorts of people are angry that it's too close to my place. It's not far. It's far enough. And everybody's furious about this. A lot of anger. We thought we could help. If you can bring this on here. We've come up with a route that we think the entire community can support. All right. Now, first of all, the train starts here at SeaTac. This is where it starts. Now, it's going to go up to Shoreline, but we say first, take a little detour down south to Wild Waves, okay? And, and, and Enchanted Village, where it speeds up and does a loop on the roller coaster, right? Start the trip out with some fun, you know, okay? Then it heads over to Kent underground. We don't want, you know, we don't want the passengers to be upset, you know, by the view. Comes out of the tunnel right at the caveman barbecue, all right? Yeah. Everyone, right there. Right. Everyone jumps off the train, grabs a pork sandwich, gets back on the train. Then we go up to the Riverside Inn in Tukwila for a little wicked line dancing, right? Like some of this, right? All right, fine. Then on into downtown Seattle right here, and then curve right up here by the aquarium. Goes by the aquarium where the train will tilt to the left, and then the shark from Jaws will jump out. Ah. And then you tour the studio where they shot Gone with the Wind. So it's, it's, that's good. Then you go north, and on Sundays, the train will stop at Julia's in Wallingford. But after waiting for about an hour and a half for a table, it'll give up. And it'll head over to Ballard, go past the firehouse in case anyone wants to see Fog Hat or Blue Oyster Cult. You know. And while, while in Ballard, the train will slow down to five miles per hour. But it will still be known as the bullet train. All right. Then it'll proceed north to its final destination in Shoreline. But first, a quick trip over here to the Maltby Cafe for a cinnamon roll. And then there, and there, that's a route that everyone can live with. That's our proposed route. Fine. Okay. Well. And we're going to bring that up at the next meeting. Anyway, we've got a great show for you tonight. But before we go any further, we've got this other great show coming to the Big King Five. Seattle, Washington, a seemingly normal place until you peel back the layers of mystery. The unsolved mysteries of Seattle. First, the ongoing mystery of what exactly is being sold here. And if it's what some people think is being sold here, what does this mean? And then there's this, Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Seattle. And the place? Jack's Payless Auto Supply Shoes, Starters, Brakes, Fine Wine, Valve Grinding Discount Foods. It is the incredible store that sells everything, except for certain remnants. And then there's this mystery. Seattle cab driver Colin Hutchins. What do you think about all this rainy weather we've been having? I don't know. How do you like the Seattle Mariners' chances this year? I don't know. What about the President Clinton, Monica Lewinsky business? I don't know. He's the Seattle cab driver who doesn't have an opinion. And then there's this strip mall, the only one in town with no teriyaki place. Hammering <laughs> man. He's been at it for five years. Shouldn't he be done by now? <laughs> They've been known to say they're a friend of the family. But where are the Christmas presents? And when's the last time they ever gave you a ride to the airport? I'm outside a nightclub that features totally nude girls. And there's a mystery. Tell us about it. Well, I was just in there for the first time. And? And I get the feeling that I, I've been in there before. Wow. 
What in the hell is that thing? <laughs> and then there's the mystery of the bottle woman, who looks astonishingly similar to Jamie Lee Curtis. I am Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't know, some idiot. A congenital liar from Bothell who looks <laughs> astonishingly similar to Jamie Lee Curtis. I've never been to Bothell. A woman who's ashamed of living in Bothell here, and who looks astonishingly similar to Jamie Lee. And then there's the mystery of the cemetery down near SeaTac Airport with this sign. If true, how do they get the bodies in there? And how do you explain this sign? <laughs> those are the unsolved mysteries. Where are you? Oh, yeah. Those are the unsolved mysteries of Seattle. <laughs> where contestants win big money by choosing which is most likely. And here's your host, Snap Andrews. Thank you very much and welcome to Most Likely. Let's meet our contestants. Well, Eric comes to us from Finney Ridge where he runs a sports memorabilia store. In his spare time, he tinkers on a mysterious project in the basement. Judy is a native of West Seattle whose peak experience in life happened back in 73 when she slept with the bass player in Leonard Skinner. Best sex I ever had, Snap. Ah, uh, okay. Sweet home Alabama, All right, yeah. that's, that's enough. Judy, Judy, okay, that's, okay, that's enough. Okay, okay. okay, well, you both know the rules, so let's get started. Okay. Eric, pick a category. Okay, uh, I will take Catholics and KVI. Okay, listen carefully. What's most likely? A KVI DJ will say something not insane, or the Catholic schools will find a less annoying fundraiser than selling world's finest chocolate bars. What's most likely? <sighs> KVI will not be insane? Oh, sorry, Eric. Not in this lifetime. Judy, pick a category. Yeah, I'll take a Pioneer and University. Okay, here goes. You will walk through Pioneer Square and not smell pee, <laughs> or... You will drive through University Village Shopping Center and find a parking space near the QFC. Ooh. What's more likely? Okay, that's, that's tough. Mm -hmm. uh, we need an answer. Yeah, a not smell pee. Correct. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right. Okay. Much more likely than parking. Keep yeah. going. Okay, I'm going to take uh, omelets and Fremont. Okay. Okay. You will finish an entire omelet at Beth's Cafe and keep it down all day or... You will be served in a Fremont restaurant by a waitress whose legs are shaved. Oh! Um... No. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It. Time's up. Okay. Eric. Gotta go with the shaved legs. That's correct. All right. Continue. Okay. Uh, I will take food and 13. Okay. You give money to someone holding a sign that says, need money for food, and they actually buy food with it, or... You watch the news on Channel 13 without mentally undressing the anchors. <laughs> What's most likely? Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a trick question there. They're both impossible. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the lightning round. Now, the, the category today is trapped in an elevator. Who would be the scariest person to be stuck in a disabled elevator with? We'll start with Judy. Are you ready? I sure am, Snap. All right. John Curley or Dale Chihuly? Uh, Chihuly. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's John Curley. Yeah, you'll have to trust me on that one. Okay, Eric. Bill the Beer Man or Bill Nye the Science Guy? Oh, they're both bad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pass. All right. Uh, the Frugal Gourmet or Cindy Reinhardt? Bill Nye. Oh, oh, sorry, Judy. Okay, now we're going to move on to the mystery number. Today's number is 72. Is 72 Cortez Kennedy's jersey number? The current age of J.P. Patches, or the number of olive varieties at the Admiral Thriftway? <laughs> Eric. Cortez Kennedy snap. Oh, no, Judy. Uh, Thriftway. Thriftway is right. Yeah. And okay. now, Judy, that's great. Okay. You move into the bonus round. Now, bring out the first bonus challenge. Now, as you see, we have identical bags in here. They have been both filled with French fries. 
for 100 points. Which one came from Dick's? Bag A, bag A. Bag A is correct, yes. That did come from Dick's. We're out. Bonus challenge number two. This unusual black object, is it a support strut from the Boeing stealth bomber or a heel from a shoe sold at Retro Viva on Broadway? That is a heel. That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, is this a dog bed for Emmett Watson's poodle or Patty Murray's booster seat? Oh, uh, booster? That's right. And now, yeah. the final question. What's most likely, this sketch has no ending or the illegitimate son of James Brown will come out and tell you what your parting gifts are? Uh, no ending. Oh, sorry. And now to discuss your parting gifts, the illegitimate son of James Brown. Hey, y'all, I'm the illegitimate son of James Brown. Here to tell you what your parting gifts are. You came in with nothing, so you're going to part with nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You do the math. <laughs> and please, have your love a spade or neuter. Nice see y'all. Hey! And that is the end of Most Likely. Stay tuned for yeah, probably over most of these stations. This is The Late Report. Well, after the Sonic Laker game last Sunday, Shaquille O'Neal complained about the officiating, calling the referees cheating bastards. The NBA said they'll use his remarks as part of their new slogan to win back fans. The NBA, you gotta love this game that's refereed by cheating bastards. <laughs> In order to reduce dog and cat overpopulation, 36 veterinary clinics in Snohomish and Island counties are offering reduced fees for neutering on Wednesdays. Special rates are $20 for a male cat, $30 for a male dog, so depending on the species, that works out to $10 or $15 per nut. <laughs> well, according to a TV report this week, imprisoned Mary Kay Letourneau warned her teenage lover in a letter not to touch or talk to another woman while she is in jail or he'll risk automatic castration. <laughs> if Letourneau goes through with that threat in Snohomish or Island County on a Wednesday, <laughs> then she could save lots of money. <laughs> the Department of Transportation says it'll shut down I-5 under the convention center and test an emergency system that is supposed to spray fire retardant onto the freeway. In an earlier test that didn't go so well, the system was spraying retarded people with fire and then sending them out into the freeway. And that's wrong. That's very wrong. Kenny G played a surprise set at the Starbucks annual shareholders meeting at Benaroya Hall this week. Many of the shareholders who were drinking a cup of Starbucks coffee at the time actually stayed awake through most of the first song. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kenny. <laughs> now to take a look at, trading at the, uh, look at trading at the stock market this week, we go to Genevieve Shuby with the Market Report. Okay, well, uh, I don't like that one Safeway. And I can't, remember, I can't remember which one it is, but it's the one that doesn't have a bakery. And I, I, don't, I don't like that one. I, I like the QFC where all the homosexuals work because they're, they're clean. And they're helpful. I don't like Albertsons because the, the carts are too big. And I, I want it. Where, what happened to Food Giant? Where, where's that market? I can't find it. What, did they move or something? Hey, Genevieve. Genevieve. Yeah. I'm, hey, I'm sorry. You're doing really good, but I think there was a little misunderstanding. We wanted to talk about the stock market, not food markets. Oh, I don't care. Uh, Where'd it go? It's okay. You did really good, okay, oh. Genevieve? Thank you. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Governor Locke is introducing legislation that would restructure the current three-member state liquor control boards into the Department of Liquor Control with just one person in charge. Governor Locke, if you're watching, I would like to be that person. <laughs> Well, the State Board of Pharmacy has ordered Rite Aid to pay a $50,000 fine after an investigation revealed an unacceptably high number of prescription mistakes by Rite Aid pharmacists. Not only that, but Rite is spelled wrong. 
<laughs> well, Starbucks has announced that it'll donate $5,000 to a literacy organization every time Mark McGuire hits a home run this season. In return, McGuire said that he would donate $5,000 to a literacy organization every time a Starbucks employee gets an order right. <laughs> Well, that was a pretty funny joke, and some of you have, may have even laughed at it, but at Almost Live, illiteracy is no laughing matter. Fortunately, our serious concerns about this subject are shared by another forward-thinking Seattle organization. So here with a few thoughts about literacy, the Sonics Dance Team! Let's get ready to rumble! Y'all ready for this? Hi. I know you're all cutting up your plastic six-pack rings so they won't end up around the neck of a duck and choke them to death. But do you know there are even more things you can do for ducks? For instance, you should also cut up your discarded cans. They too can harm a duck if he happens to get the can stuck on his ass. And remember, experts say it's best not to shoot ducks. Bullets can cause damage to vital duck organs. Never ever raise your voice or shout, not even in the privacy of your own home. Little ducks sense hostility miles away and can suffer severe lasting trauma that continues into adult duckhood. And please, don't lie. Ducks don't like liars any more than humans do. Be honest with ducks. Don't show a duck its own image in a mirror. You see, ducks don't know that they're ducks, and when they find out, well, some have been known to try and peck out their own eyes. If possible, peel your banana skin into thirds. Ducks like that. By human standards of mental wellness, a duck would be considered insane. That's why it's best not to tease a duck by using a phrase like, Hey, look at that crazy duck. So those are just a few things you can do for ducks. If you'd like to know more, write to the Things You Can Do for Ducks Council. Al Gore, Chairman. Thank you. Well, that's just about all the time we have on Almost Live for this week. If you'd like to have tickets to our show, that's the number right there. Area code 206-421-5555. Cute how it's all fives. Channel five and five numbers. We thought of that ourselves. Anyway, if you've got ideas on uh, light rail, where you'd like the route to go, make sure you send your plans in to Evening Magazine. They want to hear from them. And until then, we'll see you next week on Almost Live. Bye-bye.